Mazda already at the top of the screens as Digi tries to block the way through for Bezeki. Could have done that just to perfection. Bezeki might get a nice run down the straight, but we switch to Sam Lowe's, who is good. The World Championship in the intermediate class is underway in 2021. And that's a good start from Bo Bensteiner on the inside, also from Marco Bezeki. Second row of the grid, Lowe's does well around the outside of Fernandez. Fernandez on the brakes. It looks like Bezeki may take over at the front, but Lowe's took that undercut on the inside. Take over in third place. So it's Bezeki from Ben Snader. Lowe's in third. Fernandez is there in fourth place. A good start for Joe Roberts on the Ital Transbike. Last year's championship winning machine. He's there in fifth. Great start from Jake Dixon. Also in front of him, Fabio Digi Antonio willied a little bit. Jake's making a move immediately up the inside of Joe Roberts into fifth. Good start from Jake Dixon. He's done four or five laps together during practice. Uh, then he says he's almost into unknown territory. How long is it going to be able to last? That risk that he's still so sorry. Sam Lowe makes the first move of this race in the front runners. He's up into second place. He doesn't want to let Bezeki get away, but this is good. Neil was talking about Sam sometimes in these early laps can get bogged down. Well, that's a good move, isn't it, early on? Yeah, that shows confidence. He knew that Bezeki's his main challenger. Obviously, Ben Snyder's a little bit of an unknown quantity for Sam, but that early move straight through, clean move on the inside of turn 16, and now is immediately marking Bezeki. Yeah, you want as much clear air in front of you as possible here at the Qatar circuit as Joe Roberts goes through on the inside of Fernandez. You can understand Fernandez uh, perhaps in a, a debut ride. Oh, it's actually Remy Gardner, yeah, it's isn't Gardner, it? It's Gardner yeah. going backwards. Uh, Remy Gardner, one of the title favourites. Remember, he won the last race of last season back in Portimao in that uh, amazing battle as it was at the time with Marini and Sam Lowe's who was nursing that wrist injury. Sam himself, you can see his clothes writing on Bezeki, says he's close to 100% now with the wrist and just doesn't want to think about it. He's much more in the zone as a rider over the last 12 months is Lowe's as he slots in in second place behind Marco Bezeki. So as we head into the front straight for the very first time, the first of 20 laps of this circuit, 66 mile race here on this three and a third mile LaSalle International track and it's Bezeki from Lowe's a slight gap back then to Ben Snader and Fernandez Jake Dixon having a really really good start to the race after his well, he's had a spill earlier on this weekend the collision with his teammate in practice that saw him put back to 10th on the grid but into fifth that's a really solid start yeah and it looks like the Obviously, this, the drag effect of Paul Ben Schneider, his size down the street. You can see Ralph Fernandez slid past quite comfortably in the slipstream, and there's Ramirez pulling out. Yeah, Ramirez, I, I can't even believe he's racing. We On our grid, he'd been taken off. We got an updated version, and he wasn't even supposed to be uh, taking part in the race, but he did, and he's pulled straight in. We knew he was going to have a late fitness check, but uh, he's pulled straight in. He's broken uh, the top of his right arm towards his shoulder, but the humorous. Yeah, you might have heard uh, someone else who's done a similar kind of injury in Mar Marquez. We don't know when he's going to be back either. Uh, they were discussing last night, weren't they, about uh, himself and Mark Marquez on social media last night. How can we organise a sandstorm to blow in? <laughs> we wanted to know if Mark Marquez was in touch with the big man above. There he is, uh, back in the garage. And unfortunately, his uh, season, not off to the start, he would have liked as Sam closes in on exit of... Uh, the uh, turn 10 through this fast left-hander of turn 11. There is Jake Dixon in fifth place. Comfortable start for him. And uh, I'm, I'm presuming, I, I don't know for a fact, he hadn't taken painkillers yet this weekend. Probably comes just as you go out there to race. He said he was going to take a painkiller today. Obviously, that would just be a tablet form, not an injection, nothing too, stri too strong. But uh, just to try and get him through this race obviously adrenaline will help once he's out there but he knows that after lap four lap five it's going to start hurting but he's perfectly positioned he's got dingy starting to close in on the back of him but he's just keeping the leaders in in contact so just needs to relax into this not put too much stress through that wrist and ride a nice comfortable race he's going to get past Bo Ben here there's one thing about Jake he's uh, light even though he's quite lanky himself very very skinny is Jake and he comes across the line there and he is going to go up into fourth place excellent excellent stuff for Sam Lowe's at the front gets past Marco Bezeki Lowe's is leading in Qatar Dixon up into fourth place with no Brit to uh, get all union jacked about uh, in, in MotoGP I suppose we've got to have our jingoistic excitement here in Moto2 Sam's looking good that's confidence going to the front right early in this race see this fastest lap set by Remy Gardner after that little back and forth but he had a bit of clean air to make up that gap onto the back of Digi there he is just coming into shot Remy had a difficult qualifying didn't quite get the lap together that he expected 
He still started from that second row of the grid, but he possibly is a threat for the later laps of this race. One thing I noticed when Sam hit the front there was Bezeki was already looking as if he was desperate to make a move. He knows, he, he will fear Sam being at the front in this race. And no, probably taught uh, from the Valentino Rossi Academy, that if someone goes past you and you feel you've got the pace, you've got to make yourself wide and try and get back as quickly as possible. Because look at Sam already now that he's hit the front. Yeah, Sam's starting to put daylight between the he and Bezeki. Obviously, they know that Sam, when he got to the front in Aragon last year from pole position, he was able to stretch out such a lead, so they know they can't afford to let Sam make that break. And it looks like on this lap, Sam's getting his head down already almost half a second here at the triple right section of the lap. Let's have a look at it, because we were watching Jake Dixon, weren't we, going past Bo Bensnade. You could see him do that in the top of the screen, but it's on the brakes for Sam Lowe's down into turn one. A classic Qatar manoeuvre. And the thing is uh, about Sam now, a couple of years ago, and he'd be sideways, wouldn't he, going down into <laughs> turn it. one. He's completely changed his riding style, smoothed out everything, every part uh, of uh, the, the mechanics of the way he rides a Moto2 bike. Even how he fits on the bike, he spent a lot of time trying to work on his aerodynamics, where he put his bum in the seat, how he got his, his arms in front of his knees, just to be as streamlined as possible down the street. You could see he was able to pull out of that draft into the braking zone and make that overtake as Fernandez does wow. a carbon copy of Bezeki into turn one. So, Ralph Fernandez is feeling this. He thinks that he can chase down Sam Lowe's. Akiayo's already had one rookie. I'm not going to give anything away. Uh, doing great things in Moto3. And now he's got another in Moto2. Remember Fernandez in Moto3 at the end of last year? I mean, he looked like he was riding a minibus back then in <laughs> Moto3, didn't he? And uh, the way he smoked the field, actually, towards the end of the year. Won two of the last three races. You knew he was destined for big things. And that, it was only a late decision that he got moved up to, to Moto2, wasn't it? But uh, he's certainly showing us the right decision. Little twitch for him there. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't until Nagashima got nerfed out of that team, was it? Yeah, it was a late decision. He was planned to stay at Moto3, but it looks like a shrewd move by Akiel once again. Both his rookie rider and Remy Gardner making moves there. He did slide past Jake Dixon on the inside of Turn 4. It looks like Remy feels he's got the pace and he's going to immediately pounce on Bezeki. I think he's going to try and slide up the inside here at Turn Ooh, 10. Oh, he, and he got does. slipping oh, and sliding through the... Look, you're just getting a little bit worried now, but he's got two more indiscretions out onto the green. He shouldn't need to do that on the last lap, but yeah, that's always frightening if, when you're seeing warnings on your dashboard. If he were to now get the penalty, but exceeding track limits, he wouldn't be able to take the long lap loop. So they'd instantly add three or four seconds is roughly yeah. round about where it would be. There is, there's a different amount for each racetrack, uh, but it will probably put him down to second place. So keep it clean. One lap to go of the LaSalle International Circuit, three and a third miles here in Moto2. And Sam Lowe's is leading the Grand Prix by 2.2 seconds from Remy Garner with Marco Bezzecchi being hunted by his compatriot Fabio Di Gian Antonio. Digi, is he going to be able to launch an attack on this last lap? Digi's looking good. We've seen how strong he was up into turn 12, the last two laps, so he just needs to work his way onto the back wheel of Bezzecchi, set it up and try and slide through. On board we are with Marco Bezzecchi, fourth in the championship last year, took victory a couple of times, you remember controversially uh, when he took victory in that track limits issue, wasn't it, with Jorge Martin back in Austria. Uh, but now he's just about hanging on to the podium positions with Fabio Di Gian Antonio in his wake. They come around turn seven and uh, they head towards through the kink and it's up towards turn 10 where we've seen people make moves in the past. Is Fabio Di Gian Antonio going to be able to get that inside line? No, Bezecchi blocks him off. That's intelligent riding from Bezecchi. This is where Digi's strong though. He's setting it up, rolling around the outside through this long kink at turn 11. And he may try and put it up the inside here at turn 12. He's pulled this off before and he goes for it. It's the Valentino Rossi move that we've seen so many times over the years. Mark Marquez, a big fan of that one too. And Fabio Di Gian Antonio is into the podium positions. Sam Lowe's his big mate. He's perhaps going to join him on the podium. What's going to happen as we come up to the final couple of corners now with Fabio Di Gian Antonio in third. It's Marco Bezzecchi down in fourth place. In the final corner already at the top of the screen as Digi tries to block the way through for Bezzecchi. Could have done that just to perfection. Bezzecchi might get a nice run down the straight, but we switch to Sam Lowe's, who is going to win the opening round of Moto2 in 2021. He's done it. He's done it from Remy Garner in second place. Digi takes third. Bezzecchi is in fourth with Ralph.